Hello again, everyone. Today I'm going to be doing tray four of four for my for all of my hand turned acrylic pens. So this is the last video in the series, and you may see a couple of blank spots in this tray. So I have two spots waiting for two custom pens that I have on order. So essentially, when those come in, I am not going to buy any hand turned acrylic pens and if I do my my promise to myself is that I will try to sell one to make room for a new one so basically it has to uh, compete with one of the ones I already have um, at least that's my philosophy and I'm sticking with it we'll, we'll see we'll see if we end up with tray five of five <laughs> at some point all right so let's go ahead and get started here i'm going to flip over to my list that i have here for reference so i can give you all of the pen company names all right so this is uh let me scoot this over get it out of the frame and then i will zoom in again so that you can see okay so this is a really beautiful pen this is actually one of my favorite hand turned pens this is by uh, gilbert house of pens which is in the uk uh, I don't think I profiled this company before because I think this is the only pen I have by them and um, It's really really pretty. It's one of those hybrid blanks that has wood burl uh, This one has wood burl on the top and bottom unlike the other one that I showed in one of the prior videos that only has wood burl on the bottom um, And then it has this really pretty sparkly demo material in the middle so it's basically a perfect combination in my opinion oh and what i didn't say at the start of this video i will put a link down below to all the three prior videos in the series and the first video will show you or tell you a little bit more about the trays that i'm using and we'll kind of lay out the uh, idea for this but basically it's my hand turn acrylic pen collection that is in four trays by galen pen company all right, so this one has an extra fine semi-flex Bach nib. So this is another nib that is actually quite beautiful. I got this one from fpnibs.com and I got them when he just started making the, or at least selling the uh, semi-flex and full flex nibs. And I was really surprised when I got this one that it had a little butterfly shape. And the butterfly shape is essentially to allow the uh, metal of the nib to flex and it's just so pretty and it really does work very well I, I actually prefer the semi flex to the full flex nibs at least from him So I'm gonna put a link down below to FP nibs so you can check them out. He now has um, He's been building up his uh, variety of different flex nibs that he has mostly steel I know that he will do custom gold flex nibs, but I don't think there are any ready-made on the site at least not the last time I checked all right, and so this one is by Sindris Pen Company, which is another person who's in the UK, I believe. And this is this is basically my my disco pen, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, it's just really super sparkle. Um, you know, if you would told me ten years ago that I would be a sparkle fan, I would have told you you were crazy. But I think as I've gotten older, I've, I've embraced pink more. I've embraced sparkle more. Um, May, mostly just because I like those things and, and why not, right? Um, so what, what nib do we have on here? Okay, so I have a Bach broad purple tinted nib on here. This is uh, a nib that you can get on its own just the way it is. Um, this is a, yeah, so this is a broad and you can get them in purple, pink, or not. Actually, you can get pink from uh, pen companies that are that are coating them in pink which includes Hins pens, I think, which I have one pen from them in this tray. But their standard off the shelf colors are black, red, purple, and that might be it. <laughs> there may be one or two other colors, but I can't remember, but um, they are available. And I, I find that the broad Bach nibs write really beautifully. Although um, in my recent testing of um, doing a transcription project with Cosmo Air light paper, I have discovered that the broad Bach nib does not really work very well on that paper. So that's just something for me or possibly you to keep in mind in the future when um, writing with certain nibs in the, on that paper. Oop. So this is another pen from Little Pen Designs. And I think this is one of the first or second pens I got from him. And this is 
This was when I began my my demo sparkle collection, basically. Um, this one is not internally polished, which I probably would have preferred. But I think this this uh, the little pens, pen designs was just getting into doing these kinds of pens, and they hadn't really done internal polishing too much yet. Um, but I, I actually still like it, even, even with that sort of hazy look when you don't have it internally polished. Okay, so on this one, I have a Franklin Kristoff music nib, and their music nibs are quite broad, um, pretty much broader than any other music nib I think I've seen anywhere. And this is just a steel nib, but um, it's pretty, it's pretty, um, specific to Franklin Kristoff, I think, this particular size and shape. But it writes beautifully. It, it does write very broadly, but um, it's great for titles. It's great for, you know, large script writing. Uh, it, it's quite a ni nice music nib if you like a really broad nib that'll lay down a lot of ink. All right, and so this is another Walltown Pen Company pen. And this is one that I got secondhand again. And I had been looking for one, this I think is their purple abalone. It's uh, poured in house, I believe. And this is the only pen that I have in sort of this satin finish. You can see it's not as shiny as most of the other pens. And um, this has such a nice feel to it. I really, really love the feel of the satin pens. Do I prefer the, the more glossy look? I, I don't know, probably, because that's, that's what I have the most of. And not a lot of pen companies offer a satin finish in their um, hand-turned pens, but this is just really, really pretty. And um, if I hadn't gotten the second hand, I probably never would have gotten a satin finish because I thought I want glossy all the way, right? But um, but I saw this for sale, and then I also once I got it and felt it, I was like, this this is a really nice pen. So then on here is I think another Bach. Uh, broad nib. This might just be a regular Bach broad nib because most nib companies now just have this blank top to their nibs and this um, I think I have either Sydney lavender in here or one of the other um, lavender colors from Robert Oster and it's really really nice combination. That's that's this might make it to my perfect pairings series, although I haven't done any of those in a while. Oh, and here's another cigar-shaped pen. I'd forgotten I had this one. So this is by, oh, who is, this is by River City Pen Company. Yes, that's that's who it says on my list. I thought it said something else. I was like, oh, I don't think that's who it's from. So this is from River City Pen Company, um, and this blank is called Fairy Puke, which um, I don't know why when I saw this pen, I was like, that is the most amazing pen ever. And I really, really like, I really, really like it still. I mean, it's just so fun. The colors are really fun. And I really like how much depth you can get in here with all those little sparkle material things in there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those few pens where I immediately was like, I must have that pen because it was really cute. All right, so on here, oh, this is a, this is one of the handmade architect nibs that I have made with a fine nib, because I was trying to see if I could modify one myself, kind of like the nib grinder. Um, I'm not as good as the nib grinder, but I thought this one turned out pretty well for my um, my first handmade architect nib. And I will put a link down below to the video where I talked about my handmade nibs. Hopefully if I can find that video. Okay, sorry about that. I just had to step away for just one minute. And um, okay, so let's go on to the next pen. So this is by Signature Pen Company. This one and the next pen that I'm gonna show you are both from Signature Pen Company. And I don't think that this, uh, this person makes a ton of pens, but they're actually really, really nice quality and they have a lot of really nice blanks. I've, I unfortunately have forgotten the blank maker, but this particular blank maker makes some really interesting abalone style um, resin blanks. And the next one is also sort of in an abalone style, but without this purple tinge to it. 
Um, basically, I got this one to go with the next one that I purchased first. And then what nib do I have on here? I have a Yowo Extra Fine Flex. Is that true? Yes. So this is another steel Extra Fine Flex from Yovo. So I'm gonna say that the prior um, Flex steel nib that I showed, I think it was either, I think it was Tray 3, uh, that was probably a Yovo nib. Given the look of this one, they look very, very similar. And that's that. I, again, I have not written very much with this one, so that's this is one that I will need to get into a little bit more to really form an informed opinion on it. Okay, so this one completely got wiped away on the washi tape, but I believe that this is my micro architect on here, yes. So this, if I had, if I was on a desert island and could only bring one nib, this is the one I would bring. This extra fine, or this micro architect nib by the Nib Grinder. And it just happened to also be on a black Franklin Kristoff nib, which he offered. Um, and it's I thought it was a perfect match for this pen because the black of the nib sort of matches this to here. So again, this is by Signature Pen Company um, uh, in, a, in an abalone, sort of a unique abalone blank. All right, but yes, so this is definitely one of my favorite pen combos. All right, so only two left here. And so this one is another one from, um, oh boy, from Auto Whim Woodworks. <laughs> Losing my words today. Um, and this is probably the thinnest model I have from him. As you can see, it's pretty thin compared to the other ones. It's hard to, because I don't have another one to compare in this tray, but um, You'll have to take my word for it. This is the thinnest one I have <laughs> from him. And this is another sort of abalone color. And um, inside I have a Pilot Parallel, which is a curved 6.0 millimeter. So this, I can't even remember where I got this curved nib. I got it already ground to this curve because normally this is just um, a, a 6.0 millimeter uh, calligraphy nib. And I think I mentioned on the channel before that that um, on a whim woodworks has the same threading, or at least it will it will accommodate the threading on these um, these pilot parallel nib units. So you can use the whole unit and just screw it right into there, and it fits in the cap perfectly. It's like it was made to be. Um, I don't know if that was a conscious decision or if I just kind of stumbled upon that by accident. <laughs> Um, but this is really, really a nice pen. I don't use it that often just because this curved Pilot Parallel nib is not one that I use that often. It's really great for titles and for expressive writing because you can get a variety of weights of line with it, um, but it's not an everyday writer, obviously. All right, so the last pen in this tray, at least for now, is this Hins pen, which was a Halloween pen, and I think the blank is made by Divine Designs, it's sort of a milky white with some sparkles in it. And then it has this, this little tiny ghost there. So cute. Um, and then it has the Hins Pens logo. And I would have to say, sort of on the whole, um, Hins Pens is probably one of my least favorite hand turn makers. And um, I think it's just because they don't have a lot of variety in their blanks. Well, um, they do have a lot of variety in their blanks, but they just don't really float my boat. I think that's the case. And I know a few pen companies have started switching to sort of a custom little inset piece here, and I actually don't like that. I kind of want it to be the blank all around, um, like this, like on this end. Uh, I'm not sure if it would mess with the integrity, but it, it just really, it just cheapens it to me. To have this logo here and I feel like there's another way that you could brand your pens um, but that said I think this is kind of a nice design and it is it is comfortable in the hand and then in here I have a long knife nib which is um, sort of a Chinese version of a uh, of an architect nib and these are super cheap as well I got I got a couple of them or a few of them at some point in time and I've been using them in various pens. They all pretty much write the same. <laughs> uh, I may end up swapping them out eventually and just putting, leaving them on one or two pens. 
but that is the last one there and I think this was a special edition with the color and the um, little metal piece here and I think I got it on sale too but um, they, they often have a lot of pre-made pens on their website and I'm not sure if they do custom orders but I know they do a lot of pen shows where they have a variety of different pens that they offer. All right, so that is tray 404. So this series is now concluded. If if and when, I, I, I assume it's when I finally get these custom pens that I had ordered. One is from uh, Carolina Pen Company and one is from a company I've totally forgotten right now. But um, one is going to be uh, an abalone blank by Carolina Pen Company, AKA Brooks Blanks. And then the other one is is super exciting because it's actually a where I picked out the individual colors and I ordered a honeycomb design. So we will see what happens with that <laughs> and how it goes. But basically I put some of my favorite colors in there and we'll see how it works out. That's, that's something about ordering a custom pen that you never quite know what it's gonna look like. And it's a little scary at that point, but I, I have faith that they will come up with a really nice looking pen. Before we go, I did want to address this tray as opposed to the other trays that I introduced in the first three videos. So this is actually, let me zoom out a little bit. Can't zoom out too much because you'll see the mess on my desk. So this, um, this is the first tray that I purchased. And since I got it, it's um, this corner has come loose and it's a little bit narrower in depth than the new ones. So I think the new ones are definitely better, because especially if you have some really thick or really um, wide pens in here, sometimes you would not be able to put the tray on top or put a cover on top. So the new ones are definitely better for accommodating fatter pens. And then as I mentioned before, it does not have a little notch over here to use as a handle. So basically I put this on the bottom of my tray stack so that I can lift the other ones off fairly easily with the little handles. And then I make sure that I put my thinner pens in this bottom one. Um, they just so happen to be <laughs> divided by color as well here. Um, this one's kind of an oddball. I didn't know where to put it. Um, obviously the Carolina Pen Company uh, that will be in an abalone design. Um, that's probably gonna end up in here as well. The honeycomb pen may end up shifting some things around, but we will see when, when that comes around. All right, well, like I said, that concludes my series of hand-turned acrylic pens. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. You feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much, bye.